So, I had an idea. <sighs> so I might have fallen down the rabbit hole and made some very expensive choices. But first, hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandon, and around here you can expect videos on a variety of fabulous topics, including lifestyle and fashion, vlogs, and unboxings. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around, hit subscribe, and we'll get into it. All right, so a few weeks ago, I was at the outlet mall and I decided to poke my head into Michael Kors. Now at the time I recall saying that I felt like Michael Kors was in like their flop era in that they hadn't really produced anything that I found particularly interesting in the last couple years and I had purchased from them and returned and I just was feeling kind of overall meh about the brand. And I heard from a lot of you guys in the comments as well as on Reddit that a lot of people have been really unimpressed with the product that Michael Kors has come out with with the last few seasons. But as I was walking around the outlet, I realized I could build literally an entire look from head to toe at the Michael Kors outlet, which I thought was like a really interesting proposition, as well as something that I feel like I couldn't really do at all the brands that are at the outlet. So for this week's video, I set out on a mission. I'm gonna build a look from head to toe of Michael Kors outlet items, and consequently, do a little digging into why Michael Kors has fallen from grace. When I first came up with this video, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Not only did this topic end up being extremely timely, but it really piqued my interest and I ended up doing a really deep dive into the brand. But first, let's get into these boxes and we'll talk a little bit more. All right, guys, I just quickly ripped this stuff out of the box because we're going to get into it. But first, I wanted to touch on the fact that all of these items are from the menswear section at Michael Kors. What does this mean? It just means that they're sized for a male body um, and that they're maybe more masculine looking. That being said, and I don't want to get too far on a tangent about this because I'm really not qualified to talk about it. Um, but gender separation in the fashion industry is just so silly to me. Assigning human characteristics arbitrarily to like fashion and accessories just doesn't make a lot of sense. And my opinion on the topic, if you're asking for it, which I know you're not, um, but typically my, uh, my opinion on the topic is just wear and do what makes you happy. Carry a handbag, wear a skirt. It's 2023, y'all. Let's move on. Let's tackle some of the bigger issues of the world um, and just wear and carry what makes us happy. Anyway, philosophical tangent aside, I, I hope that all my guys, gals, non-binary pals will stick around for this video, take a look at these items with me, and get some first impressions. All right, when I said I could build an entire outfit from Michael Kors Outlet, I was not kidding. Starting off, boxers. I'm going to spare you guys too much um, commentary on this, but this is a three-pack cotton trunk. Uh, and I paid $23 for this. Next up are some pants. These are the woven joggers in black. Um, it's interesting that they call them joggers. I think it's only because they have a cuffed um, leg hole thing. Uh, these were $55. As you can see, I love the rugby polos. So I picked up a white and blue striped rugby polo. This is called the striped cotton rugby polo in midnight. And I paid $47 for this. Next are some sneakers. Um, now, it was very unclear to me when I purchased these that these were actually from the full priced store but had been like maybe moved to the outlet. I'm not really sure. Um, these are called the Miles Nylon and Leather Trainer. These were more expensive. They were $119. Continuing the theme of an entire outfit, a jacket. This is like mid thigh length, which is my personal favorite length of a jacket. This is the Stockton water resistant hooded coat in midnight blue. 
I paid $124 for this. Um, we'll get into first impressions. And you know me, I had to get a bag. I just had to do it. This is the Cooper Logo Embossed Faux Pebble Tote Bag in Navy. Long name. Um, I paid $159 for this fake leather bag. <laughs> we'll have some, some things to talk about on this one. Last up is a card case. This is the Cooper Wallet in Dark Cherry. I paid $31 for this. Without trying some of these items on, I do want to just do some first impressions, starting with the jacket, parka, hooded jacket. Um, it feels fairly thin. It's not like going to be a winter coat. It's more of just like a raincoat, which obviously works great for me because I'm in Oregon and it just rains all the time. Um, I don't know that... I have a very similar jacket from Zara that I really love. It's a, the rubberized parka. Um, and I think it was a lot cheaper than this Michael Kors equivalent. So I'm not quite sure how I feel about the price compared to the quality, but we're gonna try everything on and we're gonna give it a fair shot. Another quick first impression are these pants. They are very soft, but they don't feel that stretchy. Um, I love me a stretch pant because my weight is like up and down. Um, so we'll see if these, well, first off, we'll see if they fit. Um, <laughs> and on that topic, I'm going to not complain about the way things fit because I just ordered these like whatever size I typically order um, for like tops. I typically order a large uh, pants. I'm like a 34, 32 or a medium um, in like stretchy pants. Uh, so I just ordered like what I would typically order with any other brand. I didn't want to find like a measuring tape or like deal with any of that crap. So I'm going to try and not complain about sizing, but I probably will anyway. The only other last like first impression I want to make is this bag. It smelled awful when I was opening it up. It like was so pungent because it's faux leather, but yeah, it stinks. It has the smell of like industrial, like fish processing. It's very fishy smelling, which I know you'll know is typical with like a uh, polyurethane bag. Um, but it's really musty and I'm hoping that that smell goes away or else I'm just going to like send this right back. Okay, so we're going to move around a little bit and try some of these items on. All right, guys, I've got the tops and the bottoms on. So far, I know they could use an iron. I'm too lazy to do this just want to get it over with. I've never done one of these like try on hauls before. So a little nuanced that I didn't realize it was. So anyway, I've got the pants on. They're very comfy, very soft feeling. Um, I think they fit okay. They're a little tight around the waist, but I could also lose like 20 pounds. So that's probably going to fit better um, maybe in a little bit. So those are comfortable. The polo is it's okay. It's kind of hard going from like the rowing blazers rugby polo to this. This feels not nearly as nice. It's a little thin. Um, but yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Now let's get the shoes on. All right, guys, I've got the shoes on. You're not gonna be able to see in this shot, um, but they are on. They're fairly comfortable. I mean, they're new shoes. Um, I'll insert some B-roll of the way that they look. But first impressions are pretty good. I mean, they're just white tennis shoes. All right, last up is the jacket in terms of clothing. So I'm just going to pop that on. All right, the jacket is on. I'm going to try not to rustle it around too much so it doesn't make that weird noise. Um, I like the length of it. I think it's the perfect length for me, kind of like mid well, no, it's actually down to my knees, which I'm into. One thing I do not like, and I will try and show you guys, is it has this elasticized cuff on the inside. This is very, very uncomfortable. Um, and with my watch, it keeps like grabbing my watch and trying to like yank it into the jacket. Um, not, not the best design choice. Um, I like the zipper and the buttons I think are pretty nice. It does have one of my favorite features inside of a jacket, and that is what I call the Mafia Pocket. 
um, which is this pocket on the inside. I like that for my phone. So yeah, I'm into it. I like it. I think it looks good. I think it's comfortable. All right, last for the outfit is this tote bag um, and the cherry wallet on top. We're just gonna throw that in and pretend like I'm using this. Um, here's the outfit, guys. What do you think? What do you think of the bag? What do you think the outfit? Um, so far, I think I need to sit on it a little bit and decide how I feel about this. All right, guys, welcome to part two of today's video, which I've titled Michael Kors, The Rise and Fall of a Designer Legend. Gotta love the drama. Before I get into it, though, I do want to make a brief disclaimer. Of course, we all love to hear them. The following is based on my own research and obviously my own opinion. I did pull articles from Business Insider, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Thompson Routers, and I found a particularly compelling article in the online publication Envy Zone by Ali Nguyen. I will do my best to provide these citations in the description box below if you're interested in doing your own research or this topic is just interesting to you. Michael Kors Holdings Limited, now known as Capri Holdings, is a fashion holding company founded in 1981 by an American designer sharing the same name, Michael Kors. I'll probably end up using the terms Michael Kors and Capri Holdings interchangeably in this video, but just know that when I'm referencing either, I'm talking about the holdings company that controls the Michael Kors label. As far as I could tell, there were three main components to the brand, that being the Michael Kors collection, Michael by Michael Kors, and Michael Kors Men's. The brand's initial success was in the American market by providing luxury apparel, accessories, and footwear, but by the early 2000s, the brand Michael Kors became a world-famous luxury label. The brand, however, has seen a significant decline in the last decade in both popularity and profitability. But obviously, when we're talking about Michael Kors' success and the decline thereof, it's a really relative topic. Obviously, the designer continues to do well for himself and for his label, and reached billionaire status not too long ago. My research indicates that discourse about Michael Kors began in or around 2014, when its nearly two-decade designation as a luxury brand was challenged by consumers and business analysts alike. Business Insider attributes the departure from luxury status due to ineffective marketing strategies which misled the brand's image. From oversaturating the market, overextending partnerships with department stores, and an overzealous approach to outlet discounting, the brand sullied its own image amongst consumers. In an attempt to sustain the brand's growth, the company opened way too many stores and flooded the market with a mass of available product. This doesn't really bode well for a luxury brand, and in fact, in 2017, Michael Kors announced its decision to shutter 100 to 150 retail locations. Michael Kors is closing up to 125 stores. This after sales at stores open at least a year fell more than 14% recently. The company aggressively expanded at the height of its popularity. It opened many stores to try to compete with rival Coach and draw shoppers away from them and two Kors stores. But now, Michael Kors merchandise takes up about a quarter of the floor space at Bloomingdale's outlet. Kors CEO blaming, quote, a difficult retail environment with elevated promotional levels. As for rival Coach, it has reported sales growth. It also just agreed to buy Kate Spade. This makes it an even tougher competitor for Coors. Michael Coors's CEO, John Idle, admitted at the time that the brand's products and store experience did not sufficiently excite and engage the customers. While Coors's intention was to open up his brand by having products available to shoppers with various budgets, the strategy wasn't really effectively realized by Capri Holdings. So it seems like the, the appeal of luxury is it's supposed to be exclusive, but you actually talked to the Michael Kors CEO, John Idol, mm -hmm. and he was telling you he wants to open the market up to more people. What's behind that push? He feels that nobody should be excluded, that anybody should be able to afford within reason, you know, 
one of his products that, um, you know, that's sort of what America is founded on. It's a democratic ideal. You know, granted, his bags still sell for $400, so not everybody's buying them, but they're much more affordable than $2,000 designer handbags. Right, that's a good point. And Michael one brand analyst noted success for designers having different priced collections was an altruistic, if not difficult to obtain goal. While not impossible, it was not effective for Michael Kors. But don't you risk turning off the higher end customers, the people who are buying those top of the line bags if they see everyone around town carrying a Michael Kors bag? That's definitely a risk. And I was out there in the stores talking to customers and one girl said, you know, she loves Michael Kors. She was buying it from the beginning, but now everybody has it. She wants something different. She doesn't want to have a bag that everybody's carrying. Is there any retailer that's been able to pull off this strategy well to do kind of the high end exclusive product and still be able to expand to kind of, you know, mass luxury retail? It's really hard, but Ralph Lauren somehow magically seems to have done it. They are sort of the industry standard. They, you know, they had very, very high end product, but then they also have polo and they have different lines that appeal to different customers and they're one of the few companies that have pulled it off. Do you think we could Following Capri's acquisition of Jimmy Choo in 2017 and Versace in 2018, investors faced a tumultuous period of growth and decline. In one quarter, the brand would report strong revenues, and in the next, it would drop significantly. Neil Sanders, Managing Director of Global Data Retail, wrote in 2017, After slowly climbing the steep hill of recovery, Michael Kors now appears to be rolling down in reverse. In 2017 to 2019, the brand appeared to continue this trend of inconsistency. Though it appears to have seen a climb in stock prices in 2019, the coming years would prove a particularly troublesome time for the brand and for the luxury market in general. In March 2020, the world ground to a halt as humanity grappled with an unprecedented health crisis that disrupted almost every industry and household across the globe. Capri Holdings estimated a whopping 70% slump in their first quarter sales thanks to COVID-19 in 2020. However, the demand for affordable luxury grew during the pandemic as households tightened their belt and reduced spending, potentially contributing to a steady growth for the brand in the years following. When the Chinese government began lifting restrictions, Michael Kors experienced a huge rebound in sales in the Asian market, balancing out the North American market having generally slowed. Following the brand's success in Asia and the ease of the pandemic, Michael Kors has continued to grow and appears to have shed their one step forward, two steps back behavior it suffered in the 20 teens. The brand appears to have reinvested in their luxury items and revitalized some of the staples that put them on the map in the 80s. In August 2023, just two months ago, Tapestry Inc., the company that owns Coach, Kate Spade, and Stuart Wiseman, announced a whopping $8.5 billion deal to acquire Michael Kors's holding company. While I believe this sale is still pending regulatory approval here in the United States, Tapestry is expecting the acquisition to close in 2024. Sources at Routers indicate this pending deal will help Capri revive its Michael Kors brand under better management at Tapestry after weak sales in the past few quarters. I'm really excited to see what Tapestry does with Michael Kors, assuming regulators even approve the deal. I think it'll be a really great opportunity for Michael Kors to redesign itself and to come out with some really exciting high quality pieces. I have been a personal fan of Michael Kors over the years, though I have myself experienced some of the things I mentioned today. The oversaturation in the market, the outlet branding, it all became a little distasteful for me, and I did lose favorability with the brand. So I think this is a really exciting time, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. Editor's note. The audio gets super messed up at this point. Please forgive me. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, guys, I had to take the jacket off. I was dying. It's way too hot to be wearing a jacket inside. Um, but I just wanted to do like top three, bottom three of this haul. Um, definitely number one is going to be the wallet. Um, I actually really like this design. I have a number of Michael Kors um, wallets and I really enjoy them. I don't know if this one's genuine leather or not. I don't recall the um, name of the 
item really specifying, but I just really like this style. And I also really like that it's like split in the middle here. Um, I think that'll make like a really convenient for like my um, parking pass and my parking card, just like easy in and out. So this is definitely number one. Number two are the boxers. I don't have any complaints. Third favorite is definitely going to be the pants. Um, very comfortable, very soft. They fit well. If they're a little bit tight, that's my own fault. Um, but yeah, they're great. Kind of in the middle category, just because of how funky it smells, is this bag. I really like the size, the shape of it. I think it'll work great for work stuff. Um, it just smells funny. And I just don't think that for $159, I think you probably couldn't get the same size, but you could get a genuine leather tote bag from like Portland Leather Group um, for like similar price, I think, I, on sale or something. I don't know. Don't quote me. But I just feel like maybe for like 50 extra bucks, you could get something better that doesn't smell. So I haven't really decided. It's going to sit with me for a little bit before I decide sending it back. Bottom three, I think we actually have six items, so we can do the whole gambit. Um, jacket, I like it. It fits. It looks nice, but that elasticized cuff is just weird to me. This shirt, for how much I paid for it, I think it's too thin of a material. It's kind of mid. I like this um, design here. It's like a little fluffy, but coming from a Rolling Blazers Target rugby polo that I was wearing earlier to this, this definitely feels cheap. So I don't think I'm going to be keeping that. And last up is the shoes. I think for $110, you could probably get yourself a pair of Nikes. They're going to be comfortable. They're going to last. It's a, a brand and a quality that we all know and have, you know, high expectations of. So the shoes are just kind of meh. I don't think I'm going to keep those either. So overall, I'm kind of disappointed. Definitely let me know what you guys think overall, but it was kind of just mediocre, to be honest. And all of these items, obviously they were outlet items, so they're designed to be in the outlet, but I just had kind of higher hopes, which I know is probably misplaced. And with everything I said earlier about the brand's recent acquisition, I do have high hopes that the outlet and Michael Kors as a whole is going to improve. I do have some older Michael Kors pieces in my collection that I genuinely love and use. So let me know if you'd be interested in seeing some of those items and getting my take on some of the older, nicer quality, full priced items that I have in my collection. If you've made it this far, you've made it to the end, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video concept, the items that I picked up at the outlet, and just what I was talking about earlier about Michael Kors as a brand. Please also consider liking and subscribing. Your guys' engagement with my content is really inspiring me to continue on with this channel, and it really helps me stay motivated to create these videos, which I really enjoy doing. You can also follow me, as always, on Instagram and TikTok for additional content at BVPDX. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you next time. Bye!